I'm gonna help you get 30 to 40% more out of your HIIT training by literally just changing one simple thing. Please stick with me through the whole video because I'm gonna explain how this works and how you can apply these principles as well. Hey, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Please hit that bell button to turn on notifications and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. All right, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about adding plyometrics, okay, strategically, of course. So what are plyometrics? Okay, well, plyometrics are simply a form of jump training, a form of technique that you apply. Now, I'm gonna get into it in a lot more detail, but let me explain what high-intensity interval training is and then what plyometrics are and where they come together and why and when. Okay, so high-intensity interval training is just like the name implies. You're doing intervals at a very high intensity. So you're doing things like sled pushes, you're doing things like burpees, you're doing things like sprinting, just really high potency, extreme activity for very short periods of time. And then you're allowing yourself to recover for as long as necessary in order to do that same movement again with maximum intensity. So HIT high intensity interval training, we're thinking of it as a cellular metabolism, that kind of thing. We're thinking a cellular metabolic response. Okay, that's all it is, it's a type of workout. Plyometrics, on the other hand, are a technique that can be applied to HIT or can be applied to regular strength training too. So plyometrics are not a form of HIT. Plyometrics are a technique that you can apply with HIT, in which I'm going to explain in this video why you absolutely should be employing them within your workouts. Okay, so plyometrics, it stands for jump training, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be jumping. The plyometric effect is where you are basically trying to get your muscle to go to an extreme stretch and then recoil and rebound, okay? And that is getting you the effect of a plyometric. So for example, a squat jump, or some kind of bounce push-up where you do a push-up and then kind of press yourself up off the ground a little bit. Those kind of things are plyometrics, okay? Now, the reason that this happens is because we have a special mechanism within our muscles, special thing known as spindles that actually notice when our muscles are stretching and at what velocity, at what force, at what rate, and what intensity they are stretching. So I'll give you a simple example with my bicep. Okay, my biceps and muscles contracted right now. As it stretches, I have spindles inside my bicep that are sending a signal saying, hey, this muscle is stretching at this rate of speed, you should trigger a recoil, okay? So it's a rebound. So it's like if we're squatting at the bottom of a squat, it's a natural response for us to bounce back up. Now, if we are not trained in doing that, we get injured. Or if we're not efficient at doing it, we just kind of just aren't good at it and it ends up making us lose a lot of power. You see, we have three different phases that we need to talk about when we're looking at plyometrics. We have the eccentric contraction, which is, again, I'll give a squat as an example. Eccentric contraction with a squat is when you're coming down and you're stretching. Okay, the concentric portion, which is where you're contracting the muscles and coming up, but then you have a portion in between, and that's called the amortization phase. And the amortization phase is literally just the period between the eccentric and the, con and the concentric. So it's at the bottom of my squat. Well, simple physics would lead us to believe, and actually this is very true, I mean, it's, we're gonna lose a lot of energy at the bottom. We're gonna lose a lot of energy in that amortization phase. It's the transition period where energy can dissipate. Okay, so right now I have contractile strength that's building, its potential, and then it reacts and it's kinetic, right? It's, it's energy. But if I sit here, that potential energy draws out, it dissipates, and I now lost the ability to contract fast. Why do we care? Like, why does it even matter? Especially if we're not an athlete, what do we give a care if we can recoil or we lose our energy? Well, that energy allows you to contract that muscle faster, stronger, harder, and more effectively, which therefore means that you're going to burn more calories and you're gonna get more out of it. Simple example, now this is not exactly anatomically correct, but it's a good analogy. Okay, if you are someone that's losing a lot of your energy at the bottom of your movement or in the amortization phase, for example, a squat, well, the, when you rebound back up and you contract the muscles, then you're probably only gonna use maybe what, 30, 40, 50, 60% of your muscle. So you're not really getting that many calories that are having to exert that force. I mean, again, going off a little bit, but basically, right? Now, if you were to have more contractile recoil, like if you were able to have that rebound and contract better, you could hypothetically 
use 80 or 90 percent of the muscle, right? Because you're getting a stronger force. So 80 to 90 percent more force output. That's more caloric recruitment. That's more energy need. That's more metabolism being boosted, right? So why do we need to do this? Because it's going to improve every bit of our HIT training and improve our range of motion. But if you don't want to just take my word for it, here's an interesting study. So this study took a look at 12 weeks of HIT training, HIT plus plyometric training, or no training as a control group. Now it was a 68 person wide study. So 68 people divided into these three groups. Now the control group didn't really do anything, so let's just go ahead and get rid of them because their results weren't really anything at all. Okay, but here's what's interesting. At the end of 12 weeks, the HIT group that had plyometrics involved ended up having a 3% increase in muscle growth compared to the HIT group without plyometrics. Okay? They also had an improved leptin to adenopectin ratio that was pretty significant. What that means is their body was able to utilize and burn fat a little bit more effectively as a relationship to how many calories they were taking in. Very, very powerful there. Lastly, in 12 weeks, they saw a 22% improvement in squat jump performance. That's a dramatic, dramatic increase in overall power and explosiveness for just 12 weeks. You see, when you combine high intensity interval training and you're taxing the muscle metabolically, cellularly at a big level like that, in conjunction with applying the plyometric technique where you activate the spindles to their full degree, it seems to do something to the metabolism, but it also seems to do something to your overall performance. So all you have to do is on your HIIT training days, incorporate 20% of your workouts with plyometrics. So that means if you're setting up a routine of five exercises that you do with HIIT, only one of them has to contain plyometrics. The rest can be sprinting, biking, something low impact. You could do burpees as your plyometric. You could do squat jumps as your plyometric. You could do split jumps as your plyometric. You could do a number of different things and only 20% really needs to contain the plyometric movement. Personally, when I do HIIT, I try to have anywhere from 40 to 60% with plyometrics simply because I feel better. I feel like I get more range of motion, more muscle activation, but that's all it takes to get that extra bit of work. So rather than going into the gym and just hopping on the treadmill and running one-to-one -one intervals all the time, create a little circuit for yourself with some med ball thrusters or something like that that incorporates some plyometrics and you will see a tremendous difference in your overall results. Plus it's going to give you more range of motion and more explosiveness for your resistance training days specifically. It's a win-win all the way around. Plyometrics were big in the 90s and for some reason they started going away. So here we have it, they're coming back via Thomas DeLauer. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for more videos like this, just let me know in the comments. See you soon.